Also, another thing uh, has to do with the question of how do you find out if something is true? And if you have all these theories of, of the different religions, have all different theories about the thing, then you begin to wonder. Once you start doubting, just like you're supposed to doubt, you ask me, is the science true? You say, no, no, we don't know what's true. We're trying to find out. Everything is possibly wrong. Start out understanding religion by saying everything is possibly wrong. Let us see. As soon as you do that, you start sliding down an edge, which is hard to recover from. And so when the, with the scientific view, or well, my father's view, that we should look to see what's true and what may, be, may not be true, once you start doubting, which I think, is, to me, is a very fundamental part of my soul, is to doubt and to ask. And when you doubt and ask, it gets a little harder to believe. But why is faith good? Why is believing something without evidence good? Any God who would allow children by the millions to suffer and die in this way, and their parents to grieve in this way, either can do nothing to help them or doesn't care to. He is therefore either impotent or evil. To believe a proposition, you have to believe that you have good reasons for believing it. And, and the effect that this belief will have on your life cannot be among those reasons. And this is what it is to be clouded by bias. It's very common for people to say there's no conflict between religion and science because they, they re relate to different subject matters. Yeah, this is a lie. Religion and science both make claims about the way the world is. They make incompatible claims. While most people do not suffer the disintegrating effect of no-life narrative, what many lack is a satisfying narrative that is rich in meaning. A narrative, in other words, that creates fulfillment and enables one to cope with the existential conditions of life. The great prevalence of anxiety disorders, depression, addictions, and psychotropic and illicit drug use is evidence which points to this dire lack of meaning, and as Jung notes, meaninglessness inhibits fullness of life and is therefore equivalent to illness. To make matters worse, while many people feel that their life is missing something, most do not realize that what is missing is meaning. Instead, to fill this void of meaninglessness, many people chase after more money and material goods, elevated social status, increased knowledge, or most of all moments of pleasure and happiness. But the great religions are the ultimate source of this wisdom. For the primary purpose of religion from time immemorial has been to help us cope with our existential predicament and to find meaning in life. Not only Christianity with its symbols of salvation, writes Jung, but all religions, including the primitive with their magical rituals, are forms of psychotherapy which treat and heal the suffering of the soul and the suffering of the body caused by the soul. And in a speech given to a group of psychotherapists in the 1930s, he further explains, It is not a play on words when I call religion a psychotherapeutic system. It is the most elaborate system, and there's a great practical truth behind it. Do you now believe in God? Uh, now? Difficult to answer. I know. I, need, I don't need to believe. I know.